chairman and CEO of the Walt Disney Company, Bob Iger. for being part of our history today as we reopen Disney California Adventure. Now, dating all the way back to 1955 when Walt Disney opened Disneyland, we've celebrated park openings. They're special occasions for us, but in reality, we just want these parks to be special places for all of you, and that's the case today. Now, although we opened Disney California Adventure 11 years ago, we believe the transformation over the last five years, culminating with the phenomenal Buena Vista Street in Cars Land, has created a totally new experience and deserves a grand opening, and this really is grand. Okay, I say that's a moment. Now this is an extraordinary park in its own right, thanks to the great work of our very talented team of Imagineers, cast members, artists, designers, builders, and craftspeople who poured their talent and passion, not to mention their hearts and souls, into this remarkable transformation. Everywhere you look, you can really see and feel their dedication to making Disney California Adventure a phenomenal destination. It was their talent and commitment over the last five years that allowed us to add Toy Story Mania, Ariel's Undersea Adventure, and of course, the spectacular World of Color. Today, we're gathered to celebrate their crowning achievements, Cars Land and Buena Vista Street, which will transport guests to magical times and places where our Disney stories and characters come to life. Cars Land will literally bring you right into the heart of Radiator Springs to meet the wonderful characters created by John Lasseter and introduced to the world in those great Cars films. And when you pass through Buena Vista Street, you'll step back in time to a romantic version of Hollywood in the 1920s. The same Hollywood that Walt Disney greeted when he stepped off the train with little more than a suitcase and a dream for his own California adventure. Now, if you look right over there, you'll see a statue of Walt looking full of optimism, energy, and endless potential with a fabulous world ahead of him and a life that would not only be filled with great joy, but a life that would bring so much joy to so many others. When Walt dedicated Disneyland, he read from the now famous plaque, welcoming all to his happy place, and hoping it would be a source of great joy and inspiration for the entire world. Now, we know his dream truly came true, probably well beyond even Walt's rather prodigious imagination and dreams. And in fact, since that great summer day in July 1955, We've welcomed over 2 billion visitors to all of our parks. Now, in keeping with the tradition that Walt started at the opening of Disneyland, I'd like to read the dedication plaque that we've placed next to his statue in the words of the man who started it all and made today, and actually every day at Disney, possible. It was July of 1923. I packed all my worldly goods, a pair of trousers, a checkered coat, a lot of drawing materials, and the last of the fairy tale reels we made in a kind of frayed cardboard suitcase. And with that wonderful audacity of youth, I went to Hollywood. Arriving there was just $40. It was a big day. The day I got on the Santa Fe California Limited, I was just free and happy. Thanks, Walt. We're all glad you came west to follow your heart and pursue your dreams. The world is certainly a better place for that. Okay, and now for the big moment.
But since we're at Disney, we can't have a big moment, as you know, without a very, very special guest. So, ladies and Isn't this a special moment? Oh gosh, it sure is. You know, I'm so proud, I think I'll burst. Well, I think we should get on with the program, not you? Oh, uh, definitely. You know, I was thinking, would you mind if I brought a few more of my pals to help with the special occasion? Not at all. Take it away, Mickey. Oh, thanks, Bob. Okay, guys, come on in. Sure. <laughs> 